Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Charles Govatz. I'm the acting United States Attorney for the District of Minnesota, and I'm joined today by the prosecution team, Assistant United States Attorneys Alan Slaughter, Amanda Sertich, Leanne Bell, Evan Gilead, DOJ Trial Attorney Samantha Treppel, Trial Attorney Tara Allison, Paralegal Steph Braun, Henry Frank, Victim Witness Specialist Selena Colesrud, and Christina Busi, and FBI Special Agent Blake Hostetter. I'm also here with FBI Special Agent in Charge Michael Paul. On behalf of the trial team, the United States Attorney's Office, and the District, or sorry, the Department of Justice, I want to thank the jury for their service over the past several weeks. May 25th, 2020 represents an inflection point in our community. On that day, a man tragically and senselessly lost his life at the hands of law enforcement. It was a scene that will forever be seared into our memories. George Floyd, handcuffed and pinned to the ground by three officers, while a fourth, Officer Tutau, stood nearby. Officers Lane and King were positioned on Mr. Floyd's back and legs, and Officer Derek Chauvin held his knee on Mr. Floyd's neck. He was held down for more than nine minutes. Mr. Floyd called out more than 20 times that he couldn't breathe, repeatedly begging to be let up. Eventually, he stopped begging. He stopped breathing. His pulse stopped. He lost consciousness. It became motionless. All the while, these officers chose to do nothing to assist Mr. Floyd as he lay dying. And the world collect collectively witnessed this tragic and horrifying loss of life and humanity. Today, former officers Tao, King, and Lane stand convicted by a jury of their peers for willfully violating Mr. Floyd's civil rights, the same rights guaranteed to all of us by the United States Constitution. These officers had a moral responsibility, a legal obligation, and a duty to intervene. And by failing to do so, they committed a crime. This is a reminder that all sworn law enforcement officers, regardless of rank or seniority, individually and independently, have a duty to intervene and provide medical aid to those in their custody. It's a fundamental duty of policing. It's good policing. In their custody is in their care. And it's a duty followed every day by police officers in communities around the United States, often under very difficult circumstances. Officers Tao, King, and Lane on that day failed to fulfill this duty. And as a result, George Floyd senselessly died. That is why they were charged. That is why they were convicted. And although today's verdict won't bring George Floyd back to his family or his friends, his community, and his loved ones, this outcome represents our collective affirmation to uphold George Floyd's civil rights, again, the same ones afforded to all of us under the Constitution. My pride for the work done by this team and by my office and the department as a whole is immense. This trial presented numerous challenges and hurdles, all of which this team met and surpassed with tenacity and determination and grace and grit. It was a distinct honor and privilege to try this case. Finally, and importantly, I want to thank the Floyd family and his loved ones for their patience and cooperation for the past two years. Their strength is admirable. I'm going to be followed here at the lectern by FBI Special Agent in Charge, Michael Paul. SAC Paul. Thank you, Charlie. Again, my name is Michael Paul. I'm the Special Agent in Charge of the FBI's Minneapolis Field Office, which serves Minnesota and North and South Dakota. I want to start by uh, echoing the comments of our acting U.S. Attorney and acknowledging the service of the prosecutive uh, and investigative teams in this case. Uh, their work um, from the very get-go on the tragic day that this began 
uh, was prompt and swift. Uh, it was collaborative, not only between investigators and prosecutors, uh, but also with our partners uh, here in the state of Minnesota. And it established an important standard for us for swift investigative action in these types of matters. I also want to thank the work of the jury and their discerning ear, their diligence, um, and uh, really their fortitude in bringing forth, uh, bringing forth a very important verdict uh, for our country. Um, from the very beginning, the case had great potential to help inform a, an ongoing debate across our country about law enforcement. And today, their work, uh, their diligence again, uh, and their verdict helps us reaffirm a very important standard for all of law enforcement across America. Um, the FBI takes very seriously our civil rights investigative responsibilities. It's one of the most unique investigative jurisdictions uh, and the, one of the most important programs uh, that we work. Uh, these cases are very important for defending the rights of our citizens. And it's important for us to remember the consequences of these types of incidents as we go forward. And this case, again, is going to establish, has established, uh, a very important benchmark for all law enforcement officers, agents, deputies at all levels of law enforcement across America, uh, that we are responsible, we are professionally accountable for our actions and caring for those that are in our custody and protecting United States citizens, even those that have broken the law. So again, my, my great thanks and appreciation for all the portions of the justice system that worked collaboratively and in a timely manner on this case uh, in order to make sure that justice was done. And the FBI remains committed in the future to work these types of matters with our partners. And we're so lucky and so proud to have the collaborative relationships that we have in the state of Minnesota uh, to work on these matters when warranted. Thank you.